Alvin Carl Plantinga is an American analytic philosopher, the John A. O'Brien Professor of Philosophy Emeritus at the University of Notre Dame, and the inaugural holder of the Jalima Chair in Philosophy at Calvin College. Plantinga is widely known for his work in philosophy of religion, epistemology, metaphysics and Christian apologetics. He is the author of numerous books including God and Other Minds, The Nature of Necessity, and a trilogy of books on epistemology, culminating in warranted Christian belief. He has delivered the Gifford Lectures two times and was described by Time magazine as America's leading Orthodox Protestant philosopher of God. Plantinga is a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and is widely regarded as the world a Euro unregistered trademark's most important living Christian philosopher. Biography equals Family equals, Plantinga was born on November 15, 1932, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, to Cornelius A. Plantinga and Letty G. Bossenbroek. Plantinga's father was a first-generation immigrant, born in the Netherlands. His family is from the Dutch province of Friesland. Planting a Euro unregistered trademark S further earned a PhD in philosophy from Duke University and a master's degree in psychology, and taught several academic subjects at different colleges over the years. One of Plantinga's brothers, Cornelius Neil Plantinga, J.R., is a theologian and the former president of Calvin Theological Seminary. Another of his brothers, Leon, is an emeritus professor of musicology at Yale University. His brother Terrell worked for CBS News. In 1955, Plantinga married Kathleen de Boer. Plantinga and his wife have four children, Carl, Jane, Harry, and Anne. Both of his sons are professors at Calvin College, Carl in film studies and Harry in computer science. Harry is also the director of the college's Christian Classics Ethereal Library. Plantinga's older daughter, Jane Plantinga Poe, is a pastor at Rainier Beach Presbyterian Church in Seattle, Washington, and his younger daughter, Anne Captain, is a missionary in Cameroon working for Wycliffe Bible Translators. Equals education equals, at the end of 11th grade, Plantinga's father urged Plantinga to skip his last year of high school and immediately enroll in college. Plantinga reluctantly followed his father's advice and in 1949, a few months before his 17th birthday, he enrolled in Jamestown College, in Jamestown, North Dakota. During that same year, his father accepted a teaching job at Calvin College, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. In January 1950, Plantinga moved to Grand Rapids with his family and enrolled in Calvin College. During his first semester at Calvin, Plantinga was awarded a scholarship to attend Harvard University. Beginning in the fall of 1950, Plantinga spent two semesters at Harvard. In 1951, during Harvard's spring recess, Plantinga attended a few philosophy classes at Calvin College, and was so impressed with Calvin philosophy professor William Harry Jalima that he returned in 1951 to study philosophy under him. In 1954, Plantinga began his graduate studies at the University of Michigan where he studied under William Alston, William Frankina, and Richard Cartwright, among others. A year later, in 1955, he transferred to Yale University where he received his Ph.D. in 1958. Equals teaching career equals. Plantinga began his career as an instructor in the philosophy department at Yale in 1957, and then in 1958 he became a professor of philosophy at Wayne State University during its heyday as a major center for analytic philosophy. In 1963, he accepted a teaching job at Calvin College, where he replaced the retiring Jalima. He then spent the next 19 years at Calvin before moving to the University of Notre Dame in 1982. He retired from the University of Notre Dame in 2010 and returned to Calvin College, where he serves as the first holder of the William Harry Jalima Chair in Philosophy. He has trained many prominent philosophers working in metaphysics and epistemology including Michael Bergman at Purdue and Michael Rhee at Notre Dame and Trenton Merrick's working at University of Virginia. Equals awards and honors equals, Plantinga served as president of the American Philosophical Association, Western Division, 
1981 a Euro 1982 and as President of the Society of Christian Philosophers 1983 a Euro 1986. He has honorary degrees from Glasgow University, Calvin College, North Park College, the Free University of Amsterdam, Brigham Young University, and Valparaiso University. He was a Guggenheim Fellow, 1971 a Euro 1972, and elected a Fellow in the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1975. In 2006, the University of Notre Dame's Center for Philosophy of Religion renamed its Distinguished Scholar Fellowship as the Alvin Plantinga Fellowship. The fellowship includes an annual lecture by the current Plantinga Fellow. In 2012, the University of Pittsburgh's Philosophy Department, History and Philosophy of Science Department, and the Center for the History and Philosophy of Science co-awarded Plantinga the Nicholas Risha Prize for Systematic Philosophy, which he received with a talk titled, Religion and Science, Where the Conflict Really Lies. Philosophical Views Plantinga has argued that some people can know that God exists is a basic belief, requiring no argument. He developed this argument in two different fashions, firstly, in God and other minds, by drawing an equivalence between the teleological argument and the common sense view that people have of other minds existing by analogy with their own minds. Plantinga has also developed a more comprehensive epistemological account of the nature of warrant which allows for the existence of God as a basic belief. Plantinga has also argued that there is no logical inconsistency between the existence of evil and the existence of an all-powerful, all-knowing, holy good God. Equals problem of evil equals. Plantinga proposed a free will defense in a volume edited by Max Black in 1965, which attempts to refute the logical problem of evil, the argument that the existence of evil is logically incompatible with the existence of an omnipotent, omniscient, holy good God. Plantinga's argument states that it is possible that God, even being omnipotent, could not create a world with free creatures who never choose evil. Furthermore, it is possible that God, even being omnibenevolent, would desire to create a world which contains evil if moral goodness requires free moral creatures. Plantinga's defense has received wide acceptance among contemporary philosophers when addressing moral evil. However, the argument's handling of natural evil has been more heavily disputed, and its presupposition of a libertarianist, incompatibilist view of free will has been seen as problematic as well. According to the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy, the argument also conflicts with important theistic doctrines, including the notion of heaven and the idea that God has free will. J. L. Mackey sees Plantinga's free will defense as incoherent. Plantinga's well received book God, Freedom and Evil written in 1974 gave his response to what he saw as the incomplete and uncritical view of theism's criticism of theodicy. Plantinga's contribution stated that when the issue of a comprehensive doctrine of freedom is added to the discussion of the goodness of God and the omnipotence of God then it is not possible to exclude the presence of evil in the world after introducing freedom into the discussion. Plantinga's own summary occurs in his discussion titled Could God Have Created a World Containing Moral Good But No Moral Evil, where he states his conclusion that the price for creating a world in which they produce moral good is creating one in which they also produce moral evil. Equals reformed epistemology equals, Plantinga's contributions to epistemology include an argument which he dubs reformed epistemology. According to reformed epistemology, Belief in God can be rational and justified even without arguments or evidence for the existence of God. More specifically, Plantinga argues that belief in God is properly basic, and due to a religious externalist epistemology, he claims belief in God could be justified independently of evidence. His externalist epistemology, called proper functionalism, is a form of epistemological reliabilism. Plantinga discusses his view of reformed epistemology and proper functionalism in a three-volume series. In the first book of the trilogy, Warrant, the current debate, Plantinga introduces, analyzes, and criticizes 20th-century developments in analytic epistemology, particularly the works of Chisholm, Bonjour, Alston, Goldman, and others. In the book, Plantinga argues specifically that the theories of what he calls a euro e warrant a euro what many others have called justification put forth by these epistemologists have systematically failed to capture in full what is required for knowledge. 
In the second book, Warrant and Proper Function, he introduces the notion of warrant as an alternative to justification and discusses topics like self-knowledge, memories, perception, and probability. Plantinga's proper function account argues that as a necessary condition of having warrant, one's belief forming and belief maintaining apparatus of powers are functioning properly a euro working the way it ought to work. Plantinga explains his argument for proper function with reference to a design plan, as well as an environment in which one's cognitive equipment is optimal for use. Plantinga asserts that the design plan does not require a designer, it is perhaps possible that evolution has somehow furnished us with our design plans, but the paradigm case of a design plan is like a technological product designed by a human being. Ultimately, Plantinga argues that epistemological naturalism that is epistemology that holds that warrant is dependent on natural faculties a euro is best supported by supernaturalist metaphysics a euro in this case the belief in a creator god or designer who has laid out a design plan that includes cognitive faculties conducive to attaining knowledge. According to Plantinga, a belief, b, is warranted if 1. The cognitive faculties involved in the production of B are functioning properly a euro. Your cognitive environment is sufficiently similar to the one for which your cognitive faculties are designed. A euro the design plan governing the production of the belief in question involves, as purpose or function, the production of true beliefs a euro. And the design plan is a good one, that is, there is a high statistical or objective probability that a belief produced in accordance with the relevant segment of the design plan in that sort of environment is true. Plantinga seeks to defend this view of proper function against alternative views of proper function proposed by other philosophers which he groups together as naturalistic, including the functional generalization view of John Pollock, the evolutionary etiological account provided by Ruth Millikan and a dispositional view held by John Bigelow and Robert Pargeter. Plantinga also discusses his evolutionary argument against naturalism in the later chapters of Warrant and Proper Function. In 2000, the third volume, Warranted Christian Belief, was published. Plantinga reintroduces his theory of warrant to ask whether Christian theistic belief can enjoy warrant. He argues that this is plausible. Notably, the book does not address whether or not Christian theism is true. Equals modal ontological argument equals, Plantinga has expressed a modal logic version of the ontological argument in which he uses modal logic to develop, in a more rigorous and formal way, Norman Malcolm's and Charles Hart's Horn's modal ontological arguments. Equals evolutionary argument against naturalism equals, in Plantinga's evolutionary argument against naturalism, he argues that the truth of evolution is an epistemic defeat of naturalism. His basic argument is that if evolution and naturalism are both true, human cognitive faculties evolve to produce beliefs that have survival value, not necessarily to produce beliefs that are true. Thus, since human cognitive faculties are tuned to survival rather than truth in the naturalism evolution model, there is reason to doubt the veracity of the products of those same faculties including naturalism and evolution themselves. On the other hand, if God created man in his image by way of an evolutionary process, then Plantinga argues our faculties would probably be reliable. The argument does not assume any necessary correlation between true beliefs and survival. Making the contrary assumption a euro that there is in fact a relatively strong correlation between truth and survival a euro of human belief forming apparatus evolved giving a survival advantage, then it ought to yield truth since true beliefs confer a survival advantage. Plantinga counters that, while there may be overlap between true beliefs and beliefs that contribute to survival, the two kinds of beliefs are not the same, and he gives the following example with a man named Paul. Although the argument has been criticized by some philosophers, like Eliot Sober, it has received favorable notice from Thomas Nagel and others. Equals evolution and Christianity equals, in the past, Plantinga has lent support to the intelligent design movement. He was a member of the Ad Hoc Origins Committee that supported Philippe E. Johnson's 1991 book Darwin on Trial against paleontologist Stephen J. Gould's high-profile scathing review in Scientific American in 1992. Plantinga also provided a backcover endorsement of Johnson's book. He was a fellow of the Pro-Intelligent Design International Society for Complexity, Information, and Design, 
and has presented at a number of intelligent design conferences. In a March 2010 article in the Chronicle of Higher Education, philosopher of science Michael Ruse labeled Plantinga as an open enthusiast of intelligent design. In a letter to the editor, Plantinga made the following response. Like any Christian, I believe that the world has been created by God, and hence intelligently designed. The hallmark of intelligent design, however, is the claim that this can be shown scientifically. I'm dubious about that. As far as I can see, God certainly could have used Darwinian processes to create the living world and direct it as he wanted to go. Hence evolution as such does not imply that there is no direction in the history of life. What does have that implication is not evolutionary theory itself, but unguided evolution, the idea that neither God nor any other person has taken a hand in guiding, directing or orchestrating the course of evolution. But the scientific theory of evolution, sensibly enough, says nothing one way or the other about divine guidance. It doesn't say that evolution is divinely guided. It also doesn't say that it isn't. Like almost any theist, I reject unguided evolution. But the contemporary scientific theory of evolution just is such a euro apart from philosophical or theological add-ons a euro doesn't say that evolution is unguided. Like science in general, it makes no pronouncements on the existence or activity of God. Selected works by Plantinga, God and Other Minds. Ithaca, Cornell University Press. 1967. Rev. ed. 1990. ISBN 0-8014-9735-3, The Nature of Necessity. Oxford, Clarendon Press. 1974. ISBN 0-19-824404-5, God, Freedom, and Evil. Grand Rapids, Edmonds. 1974. ISBN 0-04-100040-4, Does God Have a Nature? Wisconsin, Marquette University Press. 1980. ISBN 0-87462-145-3, Faith and Rationality, Reason and Belief in God. Notre Dame, University of Notre Dame Press. 1983. ISBN 0-268-00964-3, Warrant, The Current Debate. New York, Oxford University Press. 1993. ISBN 0-19-507861-6, Warrant and Proper Function. Oxford, Oxford University Press. 1993. ISBN 0-19-507863-2, Warranted Christian Belief. New York, Oxford University Press. 2000. ISBN 0-19-513192-4 online, Essays in the Metaphysics of Modality. Matthew Davidson. New York, Oxford University Press. 2003. ISBN 0-19-510376-9, Knowledge of God. Oxford, Blackwell. 2008. ISBN 0-631-19364-2, Science and Religion. Oxford, Oxford University Press. 2010 ISBN 0-19-973842-4. Where the Conflict Really Lies, Science, Religion, and Naturalism. Oxford, Oxford University Press. 2011. ISBN 0-19-981209-8, Knowledge and Christian Belief. Grand Rapids, Edmonds. 2015. ISBN 0802872042. See also. American Philosophy. List of American Philosophers Notes References Self-Profile in Alvin Plantinga, James Tomblin and Peter Van Inwagen ed. 1985, Forrest, Barbara. Gross, Paul R. Creationism's Trojan Horse. Oxford University Press. 
ISBN 0-19-515742-7. Mackey, J. L. The Miracle of Theism, Arguments for and Against the Existence of God. Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-824682-X. Meister, Chad. Introducing Philosophy of Religion. Routledge. ISBN 978-0-415-40327-6. Further reading, Baker, Dean Peter, Alvin Plantinga. New York, Cambridge University Press. 2007. Maskrod, Keith, Alvin Plantinga and Christian Apologetics. Whipfenstock. 2007. Crisp, Thomas, Matthew Davidson, David Van der Laan, Knowledge and Reality, Essays in Honor of Alvin Plantinga. Dordgt, Springer. 2006. Balby, James, Epistemology is Theology, An Evaluation of Alvin Plantinga's Religious Epistemology. Aldershot, Ashgate 2005, Balby, James, Naturalism Defeated. Essays on Plantinga's Evolutionary Argument Against Naturalism. Ithaca, Cornell University Press. 2002. Sennett, James, The Analytic Theist, and Alvin Plantinga Reader. Grand Rapids, E. Artman. 1998. ISBN 0-8028-4229-1, Kvanvig, Jonathan, Warrant in Contemporary Epistemology. Essays in Honor of Plantinga's Theory of Knowledge. Savage, Maryland, Roman and Littlefield. 1996. McLeod, Mark S. Rationality and Theistic Belief, An Essay on Reformed Epistemology. Ithaca, Cornell University Press. 1993. Zorgzebski, Linda, Rational Faith. Notre Dame, University of Notre Dame Press. 1993. Senate, James, Modality, Probability, and Rationality, A Critical Examination of Alvin Plantinga's Philosophy. New York, P. Lang 1992. Eitenga, Dewey, From Plato to Plantinga, An Introduction to Reformed Epistemology. Albany, State University of New York Press. 1991. Parsons, Keith, God and the Burden of Proof, Plantinga, Swinburne and the Analytic Defense of Theism. Buffalo, New York, Prometheus Books. 1989. Tomberlin, James and Peter Van Inwagen, Alvin Plantinga. Dordgt, D. Reidel. 1985. External links, Alvin Plantinga's faculty page at the University of Notre Dame, Plantinga's Curriculum Vitae, Virtual Library of Christian Philosophy A collection of some of Plantinga's papers, papers by Plantinga Extensive collection of online papers. Interviews from the PBS program Closer to Truth, The Dawkins Confusion, Plantinga's review of Richard Dawkins's The God Delusion from Books and Culture magazine, Alvin Plantinga's spiritual autobiography, Warrant, The Current Debate Plantinga's Gifford Lecture, and Volume 1 of his trilogy on Warrant. Warrant and Proper Function Plantinga's Gifford Lecture, and Volume 2 of the Warrant Trilogy. Warranted Christian Belief, Full Electronic Text of Volume 3 of the Warrant Trilogy. Daniel C. Dennett and Alvin Plantinga, Science and Religion, Are They Compatible? 